Hello everybody, welcome to Weekly Market News. Today is Monday, 10th of uh, uh, May, and we are beginning the new week, uh, which is uh, kicked off by very low volatility, um, somewhat of uh, lower volumes than we are used to from a previous year, but uh, more or less uh, there are some risks and uh, some uh, doubts over uh, the recent rally on the markets. But you can, as you can see, Dow Jones and uh, several other uh, U.S. stock indices uh, managed to uh, reach another uh, record high. You can see Dow Jones uh, even uh, tripled the, uh, I mean, three times over and over uh, created a new record highs, which is uh, extremely positive, and it shows the um, it shows the sentiment right now on the markets, uh, which is more or less. Uh, in the favor of uh, cyclical and value stocks, uh, uh, while technological stocks and, and stocks that were under heavy buying pressure uh, from last year are uh, currently losing uh, their shine a little bit. But more or less, uh, very positive sentiment overall at the markets. Uh, even last week uh, was... Um, uh, from a macroeconomic standpoint, uh, maybe didn't look as good as we uh, would expect, but it didn't stop markets uh, to rally uh, even higher. So you can see Dow Jones here. Uh, also, S&P 500 was uh, able to close at the new uh, record highs uh, on Friday. You can see the, the Monday session is, uh, like I said before, low volatility, uh, low volumes, which we experienced more or less from the beginning of this year. And we are more or less uh, expecting markets to um, move in direction uh, where the sentiment will be. Um, but like I said, the NASDAQ and technological stocks are uh, under a little bit of pressure, uh, which is, uh, you can see from, um, which is uh, from, uh, from the fact that uh, I believe it was last week uh, when the Janet Allen um, said that the rates uh, will have to go up at some point and uh, to uh, kind of stop an economy from overheating from those monetary and fiscal stimulus, which isn't uh, anything uh, surprisingly new. We, knew, we know already that the rates uh, will have to go up at some point but um, they will not go up as right now. Uh, we still do not see inflation picking up uh, extremely fast, so uh, there are no significant risks as right now, but we obviously have to uh, kind of uh, take that in consideration. Uh, but over, overall, uh, it was more or less news that uh, should not uh, start some um, heavy downtrend on technological stocks. But like I said before, even technological stocks, especially technological stocks, are um, under pressure as they are uh, close or near their uh, record highs. And um, obviously the space for uh, further gains uh, is getting smaller and smaller, even with the very solid and very uh, in some cases, even blowout quarters that uh, we saw from uh, names like Apple, Amazon, Facebook, or uh, Microsoft. But uh, like I said before, uh, we have seen last week uh, news from US, uh, which uh, is very interesting, but uh, more or less disappointing. Um, Non-farm payrolls uh, rose by 266,000. Expectation was uh, a little bit less than 1 million added uh, new jobs, which uh, was far from expectation. Even the unemployment rate uh, ticked up a little bit uh, to 6.1% from 6% in the previous month. Uh, even that, uh, even there, the expectation, uh, those numbers are not correct. Uh, those expectations were uh, a lot lower. They were uh, I believe that 5.8 percent. So uh, you can see that uh, the job market didn't deliver uh, what we expected and what we have seen from uh, uh, claims from the United States um, in the previous weeks, uh, which uh, rose by the lowest number since the beginning of the pandemic. So um, those are the those are the facts right now at the markets. Uh, those are the things that we have to count with. 
uh, maybe uh, that is the reason why technological stocks are under heavy, under some pressure uh, as we begin the, the new week. But we'll have to wait and see how the U.S. will open on Monday and uh, what trend uh, we can expect from technological stocks this week. But um, I would be more or less positive. Uh, let's watch closely Dow Jones and let's watch closely um, maybe perhaps even... Um, even the yields from U.S. Treasuries, which uh, can play a little part this week, uh, as we do not expect much of macroeconomic news, uh, not really even um, on the, from the earnings standpoint, we do not expect uh, some uh, big numbers like in previous weeks. Um, from those very little uh, numbers that we expect, uh, you can see that uh, we uh, will see earnings from uh, names like Alibaba, Walt Disney, Airbnb, so Thursday session might be interesting. Um, on Wednesday, uh, there's a Wish, uh, a very uh, publicly known company, also Wix. Um, but you can see those uh, work show, uh, Roblox, Nanox. So somewhat of interesting names, but uh, they really shouldn't play a big part in... Um, the moves on uh, stock indices uh, this week. But um, so this will be it uh, for stocks. Even uh, I point out, pointed out here the Wix index, which is uh, more or less at the lowest numbers uh, since the beginning of this year. You can see we were a little bit lower 16.25, 16.66, 16.69. Uh, from year to date, we are on the lowest, so uh, there's really uh, not much we can expect from stocks this, this week. You know, this would be very challenging um, for some stock markets to uh, even uh, go above their uh, previous highs and uh, maybe even uh, reach those numbers, uh, especially for technological stocks, but uh, even uh, other names are having uh, some sort of issues. Uh, and when you compare it especially to Bitcoin and uh, other cryptocurrencies where the volumes are surging and uh, you can see on stocks uh, that the volumes are decreasing uh, with a lot faster pace than uh, previously anticipated. So those are, those are the things, those are the movers on the markets. Uh, if you look at the, um, if you look at the uh, Forex, and uh, currencies uh, last uh, week and even the, at the beginning of this week, Euro uh, was able to go up uh, above 121, uh, broke even the previous high, broke the 100%. Um, at the beginning of this, of, this week, of this week, you can see the close above the previous high, uh, test those levels from before, and uh, from the pullback we are going up so it's more or less some somewhat of a thing that we expected um the 121 level was not uh so strong i mean it was very strong for the markets but uh, uh it was that strong that it didn't uh it didn't even let the market to a close uh fully below the level and we bounced back uh, up from there uh, obviously, the bad numbers from U.S. job market is helping uh, the overall sentiment uh, that we can see um, right now on Forex, uh, especially on Euro. And, um, and if you look at the dollar, which is right now more or less uh, decreasing. Um, British pound is extremely interesting, especially uh, at the beginning of this week and even uh, from uh, the end of the last week as uh, we have some political uncertainty uh, out of the market as uh, British Pound and especially in Scotland uh, there uh, were um, parliament election that took place S&P uh, won, uh, won, uh, won the election uh, which increases the chances of referendum from uh, United Kingdom, of Scotland from United Kingdom. Obviously, Boris Johnson is not happy about it. This will uh, probably lead to more discussion uh, between Scotland and Britain, and uh, we'll probably see uh, a lot more volatility over there at the markets in the, in the, in the, future, uh, in the future weeks and, and months. 
but right now you can see that the, the British pound was um, more or less um, nervous and uh, anxious about the outcome of the election. And uh, right now that we have it, uh, it's more or less positive for the markets. You can see a British pound even took advantage of this uh, head and shoulders uh, pattern, uh, broke above this uh, trending and downwards channel, uh, ticked up. Close, uh, we will see if we close above uh, this strong uh, support right now, resistance area. And uh, we all obviously have open space to 140, uh, 142 uh, up, up there. Um, other markets like oil, uh, more or less nothing extremely happened. There were some cyber attacks to uh, one company, uh, I believe it's called Colonial Pipeline, uh, which um, uh, which uh, uh, takes care of the supply of of, um, of uh, gasoline and, and, and other derivatives from oil to uh, cities in the United States from uh, Mexico, and uh, we probably uh, will see some some somewhat of uh, consolidation here as uh, we reach uh, somewhat of uh, very high levels. Obviously, the demand uh, for Cooper. Uh, is also helping to boost the other prices of commodities. So um, we are more or less right now at the point uh, where it should be $65 a barrel. It's a good price. It's a good price for, for producers. They make money. Uh, even OPEC is ready to ramp up the production. Uh, so it should more or less be stabilized over there at the supply-demand side. And uh, it should reflect even at the prices. So this would be it for uh, the markets this week. Uh, like I said before, let's look at the uh, let's look at the microeconomic news uh, that we expect this week and what can uh, really move the markets. Monday there is nothing uh, that could move the markets. On Tuesday you have Zeth index from uh, Germany. Uh, you have uh, Jolts. Uh, you have also some speeches from Bailey. As the Bank of England um, uh, governor, and on Wednesday, uh, on Wednesday, some hard data from UK, um, CPI data from from USA. So that that will be quite interesting. But we more or less expect to the uh, inflation to tick up uh, quite significantly as we have a very low, uh, very low. Uh, base from last year that we count with this year-on-year -year CPI numbers. Uh, inventories, as usual, um, in US on Thursday. Uh, on Thursday, again, uh, speeches from uh, major guys from the central banks. And on Friday, uh, retail sales from US. Uh, which would tell us a lot, but uh, month on monthly, uh, month on month on month, uh, those numbers will not be great as uh, we compare it with the previous month, which was a blowout, crazy numbers, and uh, also this number will be interesting. This last, you can see the last week, 27.7, almost 30 percent. Uh, retail sales are expected on a year on a year basis to rise 20 percent. That will be. Uh, very uh, very good number for for retail sector in the US so that's that's it for the to, for today's video if you guys have any question leave it down in the comment section below the video and I will see you next week